and welcome back. Today we are starting a new project. I know I said I was going to keep working on my unfinished projects back there in the tubs and I have been working on those and I've got some of those done but every once in a while you just got to start a new one so this this time today we're starting a new one. It's one I'm excited to get started with. What you'll need to start with this one is some fat quarters. You either need 12 fat quarters or a bundle, whatever you've got. You can use the bundle or you could use like just plain fat quarters that you yourself have put together. That's up to you. But I am going to use this fat quarter bundle. I will have extras and I will use those for another project, but I'm gonna use this. And then you're gonna need about three yards of strips cut into two and a half inch strips. You can use jelly rolls or you could use yardage. I'm going to use yardage and I'll take three yards of this and cut it into two and a half inch strips and then we'll cut these. So let's get started. The first step we're going to do is we're going to take these fat quarters and we are going to open them up and we are going to iron them. Not my favorite step by any means, but a necessary step when you're talking about pre-cut items like this that have been folded for a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with ironing. Hmm. Now this pattern calls for 12 fat quarters. You could make it bigger if you wanted to, smaller if you wanted to, but we're gonna do it like the pattern says. So we're gonna start with 12 fat quarters. And what I've done is I've gone through this stack of fat quarters, the bundle that I have, and I have picked out my 12 favorite ones. And then I'm gonna spray it just a little bit with my best press and then I'm going to iron it. I'm gonna do that with each of the pieces that I'm using to get these creases out to make it flat so that when I'd make my cuts, then it's gonna be more precise. This step will take a few minutes, but it's a necessary evil. So we are getting started. I'll iron all these and then I'll come back to you when I've got them ironed. The fabric line that I'm using for this one is called Willow and it's a Moda line and I love it. I have wanted to do something with it ever since we got it recently. And when I saw this pattern, this was the immediately what I went to is this is the one I wanted to use it with. Now this pattern too that I'm about to show you is would be this pattern would really be good with uh, old school prints like 30s reprints but I've got a lot of 30s reprints things around the shop and at home and so I wanted to do something different and well like I said I've been wanting to use this line so this is the route we're going with this pattern but it would be cute in a lot of different fabric lines And just like that, they're iron. Now this was a 30 uh, set for fat quarters and you only needed 12, but I couldn't decide which ones for sure that I wanted to keep and which ones I wanted to cull. So I ironed them all and I'll decide as I go along. But I'm gonna take the first one. Now you can stack them up and do multiples at one time, but I'm gonna show you this way one at a time for now. So you're gonna take your fat quarter you're gonna turn it to where the long side is going up. <clears throat> then you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna cut strips at two and a half inches wide. So I've got one, I'm gonna need seven from each fat quarter. I've got one, good at the end here let's see there's my third make sure you've got it lined up good so they're accurate cuts there's four five six 
and seven. You'll have a little little piece left over, a little sliver. You'll just put that to the side. Now we've got our seven strips and we're going to start our first block. But before we start our first block, we need our background fabric. And again, I said you could use the jelly roll strips or you could cut your own. I'm cutting my own and I will need 42 strips. It should take about three yards, but I'm gonna need 42 strips at two and a half inches wide. So since I've got this bolt and I'm wanting to show y'all how to get started, I'm just gonna cut a few strips to begin with and go ahead and start this project. But when it's all said and done, I'll need 42 background strips. And that is if I keep it this size. I might very well, because I'm having a hard time culling some of these fabrics in this fat quarter bundle, I might just make mine a little bit bigger. I don't know yet. We'll see how good I am at culling some of these fabrics. So I've got some strips. Now let me cut a couple more. All right, I've got some strips cut. So we're gonna start with the first step of this quilt and we gotta go back to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew these strips together, but before we do, we've taken our white strips that were width of fabric long and we've cut them in half so that now we've got two strips about the same size as this fat quarter was. So we're gonna take them and we're gonna sew them together. Once we've sewn these pieces together, we are going to set that seam, open it up, and you want to press that seam to the dark side of the fabric away from your background. If you have a background that's a dark fabric, then you can iron it that way, but mine is not, so I'm ironing away from the background. And I should end with a piece that looks just like this, perfectly ironed. So let's take it to the cutting table. Now we've got one long piece that is sewn together, a dark, I mean a print and a background fabric. We're going to straighten up this side just to make it completely straight. And then we're going to cut this into two 10 inch strips. So I'm going to measure from here down to the 10 inch line and I'm gonna line my ruler up at 10 inches and I'm gonna cut right there. Then I'm gonna take it again to the 20 and then I'm gonna cut right there. So now I've got two 10 inch pieces and I've got a little bit left over. And you all know me, I'm not throwing this away. I will use this in a crumb quilt or a scrappy quilt of some sort, whether it be strips or whatever, but. I will get a use out of this here shortly, so I'm going to stick this in my scrap pile. With our two 10 inch strips, we're going to take them and sew them together, right sides together, so that they'll look like this. You'll have a background, a print, a background, and a print. So we're going to lay it right sides together, line it up, take it to the machine, and sew a quarter inch. my strings, my threads, and when I open it up, it looks like this. Then you'll take this square over to the cutting table, line it up on the cutting mat, and then you're going to take two and a half inch cuts. So you're going to line this ruler up or line the cutting mat up with the marks, and this is two and a half on my ruler, so I'm going to cut right here. 
There's one, I should end up with four. There's two. Three, and this one should be four. And there's nothing left to trim up, so that is good. So I've got my four pieces and I'm gonna take it back to the sewing machine. Now we've got our four cuts and they should look like this. We're gonna take the second and the fourth and we're gonna flip them. So that now it looks like that. We're gonna take the first one, put them right sides together, line them up and sew them again at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna put them right sides together, line them up, so a quarter inch. Your squares should line up, and if you're having trouble with them lining up, then you can pin them at these junctions so that you make sure they line up. I'll show you what I mean by that. Now we've got these two units like this that we need to sew together. So what I'm saying with the lining them up at those junctions is you could take them right sides together if you have a hard time lining them up Take them to those, line those seams up, the print to the print, roll it up to the top till that meets, and then pin it, and do the same thing with the other ones. You'll take it and line those prints up, roll it up to the top. Now you know they line up. Then you'll take it to the machine and you'll sew them together that middle one first. All right, when they're lined up, you take it to the machine. And sew a quarter inch. Take your pins out as you get to them. Make sure you keep it lined up. And then you've got the first block done. And we're gonna keep doing that. There's your first block. With the 12 fat quarters, you'll have enough to do nine by nine, nine across by nine down. So you'll have enough to do 81 blocks like this. Now you can make it bigger, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna do yet or not. I've got enough fat quarters to do that with. So I might, but I'm gonna see how it looks when I get it done as to whether I keep going. But there's your first block. You keep going until you get the rest of them made. I'm starting work on the second block now, and you could chain them like I'm doing and do them all at once instead of doing the one like I did, but you'll chain piece them like this, going all the way down that strip when you started. At a quarter inch, till you get to the end. And then you can cut them apart, like so, and then start the process for each block. It's up to you whether you do one block at a time or you do them like this. But each fat quarter will get you 
seven blocks. So you will have seven squares like this from each fat quarter. There are ways to speed up the process, like the chain piecing, like I just showed you. And there's other ways like this right here. You could go ahead and line them up, making sure all your background fabrics are on one side and your prints are on another. Line them up. And make sure they're lined up well. Cut the ends off to where it's a straight edge. Line that up. And then I'm gonna take this stack here and I'm gonna cut at the 10 inch mark. And then I'm gonna cut again at the 20 inch mark. Put my scraps in my scrap pile and I've got my two sets. I can do the same thing with this. And then my cutting when I do this is minimized from the getting up and getting down and getting up and getting down. I can just cut all these, take them to the sewing machine, then do the next step, then come back instead of getting up and getting down so many times, going from sewing to cutting. So I'm gonna go from here, 10 and 20, make those cuts. Now I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew them together to make the pieces that looked like this. Then you take them to the sewing machine and do like we did on the last time. We put them together like this, right sides together and sewed them. And then I'm going to chain piece these. So I've already got some I've sewn and I'm just gonna keep going. This is the same way as doing it one by one. This just speeds it up so that you have all the same steps done at the same time. So you're not getting up going from one spot to the next. You're just doing all the sewing, then all the cutting, then all the sewing. So it speeds it up a little bit. Again, if you're more comfortable doing the other way, one at a time, do it one at a time. And to speed things up with this process, you do the same thing. You line them up, make sure they're lined up well. I've already ironed them with the seam going to the dark side. Then once I've got them lined up, I'll stack however many I feel comfortable stacking and I'll take my two and a half inch cut piece cuts. Then I'll do the same thing with this other stack. Then I'll start sewing them together like that block. Again, if you feel comfortable doing one at a time, by all means do that way. And I'm gonna keep going and I'll meet you back here when I've got some done. There are so many different ways you could do this quilt. You could take these pieces that I'm sewing together now like this. And if you cut all your strips like this, for all your fat quarters, you could put these together and this be one set of fabric and this be a different type fabric. You could alter this lots of different ways. We're gonna keep ours the same fabric for each square, but you can change it up to meet whatever you want it to be. But we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep making our blocks and meet you back here shortly. When you're sewing these together, when we put them all together in the quilt, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we start one way or the other, whether the top left is a, a background fabric or the top left is a patterned fabric. You're gonna to wanna to start piecing them the same way when you're doing rows. By the time you're done with your squares, from each fat quarter that you had, you'll have seven squares like this. And what I'm saying when you piece them together is, we're gonna pretend this is different fabrics because you don't wanna put these together side by side in the quilt, you'll do other ones, but I've still gotta make my other squares. So let's pretend at this point, these are different background, I mean, different fat quarter prints. 
when you put them together, you'll either put the white in the top left square or you'll put the print in the top left square. But whichever way you do it, keep it the same. So you would do top left is white, top left is white, then you would sew these together, then you would grab another one and you would pick the top left is rot white and you would sew it here and you'd go all the way across to the nine by nine, nine squares per row and nine rows, unless you're gonna make it bigger and then you'll add more to those. So keep them the same direction, whichever one you decide. Now let's get on to making the rest of our fat quarter squares. Now, once you get all your squares like this, they're all sewn together, they're all ready to sew together, we take them and we'll take one and measure it. And this one is eight and a half by eight and a half. So you're gonna do the same thing with each one. The next one is eight and a half by eight and a half. They should all measure the same thing. If they don't, make sure they do. If you need to trim a little tiny sleeve off each piece to make them the one that's the smallest size, that's what you'll need to do. So once you get them all the same size, then we're gonna take them to the sewing machine and just start sewing them right sides together down one side until they're all sewn together like this. And we're gonna alternate patterns, of course. So let's go to the sewing machine and start sewing them together. Okay, we're over at the sewing machine now and we're ready to sew our blocks together. If you guys, first off, hear the little sounds over here, that is my three-week-old grandson. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm enjoying him being here. So, anyway, the little coos and the sounds, and well, right now the cries, that's him. But it'll stop in just a second. So now let's get to sewing. We've got our squares. I told you it'd stop. We've got our squares, and we're going to sew them together. I've got them stacked in different stacks per the pattern. So this whole stack here is all of this print. And I've done that because I don't wanna sew two of the same prints together, so I'll be able to pick from different stacks. So I've got this table of nothing but stacks of different prints. So I'm gonna take one, and remember when I said when you sewed these, these strips together to make this, that you always started with the same thing, like you started with the white and then the colored and then the white and then the colored, when you're laying it out to sew this portion together, same thing goes with this. I'm gonna start with the white in the top left corner. You could start with the colored in this top left corner, that's up to you. But I'm starting with the white, so I've got my white up here. Then I'm gonna take another block and I'm gonna put the white up at the top left. So I'm gonna take them like this and I'm gonna top white top left again, white top left, sew them right sides together and down this seam, I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam. And then we've got 81 squares. So we're gonna do nine by nine. Nine across, nine down. Okay, we're gonna line them up. Remember I said the white is in my top left, so the white is the top left over here. I'm gonna take another one, and I've got them in the separate piles so that I don't make sure, I make sure that I don't put the same ones beside each other. So I'm gonna line this up, top left, top left is white. I'm gonna line this up down this seam these seams should match right here. If you need to line them up, roll it up, pin it, then do that. And then take it over to the sewing machine and sew your quarter inch seam.
then you'll have another block. So we're gonna keep this going until we have nine across, and then we're gonna do nine of these, and then we're gonna sew those rows together. So I'll come back when I've got my rows done, and then we'll show you how to put the rows together. One more thing I need to tell you before we go to the sewing the rows together is, remember I had my stack set out to I had all of one print in one stack? Excuse me, one stack? Well, I've got my row of nine sewn together, but when I wrote, sew my next row, my first piece on this row was this print. I don't wanna put that same print down below it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this row right here in front of me, and I'm gonna pick anything but this print as my first print so that it's not backed up to it on the quilt. I'm even not gonna pick this one because it's too close to it diagonally. You could line this up on a design wall as well if you wanted to watch the progression of it being made. We have design walls here that you could hang up and, and do that. We sell those at the shop. But if you don't wanna do that or if you wanna, there's several ways you can do it, but this is the way I'm gonna do right here. So I'm just gonna lay it here. I'm gonna pick my first print. It's gonna be anything but one of those two. So it's gonna be this one. So I'm gonna take my top left as a white then the next print was that yellow one, was this one on that row. So I'm gonna pick anything but that. So maybe I'll pick this print. So I'm gonna put my top left here and then I'm gonna put them right sides together and I'm gonna sew it all the way down. And then I think what I'm gonna do is instead of doing row one, row two, row three and sew them all and then sew them together, I'm gonna sew them as I go so that I can sit and watch. Wait, I don't want this one in this place because it's right above it or it's diagonally from it. So that way all my same prints aren't in one spot on the quilt. So I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna sew these together based on that first row. Then I'm gonna sew row two to row one. And then when I get that done, I'll row, start sewing, excuse me, row three to row one and two based on what two has in it. Now I've got my first two rows together. So I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna take the top the first square of the second row and the first square of the first row. Let me see if you can see it better here. I'm gonna take this square and this square and sew them together. So I'm gonna put them right sides together. I'm gonna line these seams up. And if you need to pin them, pin them. And then I'm gonna go all the way down this seam so that when I open it back up, these two rows are sewn together. But another thing I wanna mention before we go on is these stacks that have all the different prints in them, like this is all the yellow print, this is all the pink floral print. You wanna watch these stacks as you're going along. You wanna make sure that you don't have one in this one and 10 in this one left, or seven in this one left, because you don't want all of these bunched together in one row at the bottom. So kind of make sure you're watching these stacks as you go along and you're using from all the separate stacks so that you don't end up with all of one like print in your bottom row. So that's another reason a lot of people like using the design walls, but just keep, keep an eye on the amounts of these and then sew these rows together. And then when we get them done, all the nine rows sewn and then sewn together, then we'll come back and we'll show you what the finished product looks like. Well, we're done with the quilt top. So now the next step is to quilt it. But let me show you what it turned out like. Super, super cute and big. I thought in the beginning that I may or may not add to it. Well, I don't think I need to add to it because it's quite large. It came out to be about 72 inches squared. So you got nine blocks going across and nine blocks going down equals out to be about 72 by 72. So that is a good size quilt. So now our next step is to quilt it. I hope you guys tried this. If you do, post it in the links. Let us know you're trying it. We're here if you have any questions along the way, if you're gonna try to make this, let us know, reach out to us somehow, Facebook, Instagram, website, YouTube, however, we'd be glad to help you. So here is the, the quilt that we worked on this time. And now we'll either work on one in our UFO stack or start a new one. So until next time, happy quilting and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Happy quilting.